<laughs> Welcome, guys, to another informational interview. Here we have fashion designers, co-founders of Selva Negra. Um, her name is Christine Gonzalez and Sam Romero. Um, my name is Dania. I'm Stefan. And once again, welcome and enjoy this conversation. Um, so here we have the Black Lives Matter. We all know what's going on and how devastating this is for us. So in case you want to take action today, here's some information that you can take right now. So feel free to screenshot whatever you need. And yeah. And if there's something on here that you want to check in later on, we can definitely pass on for some information to you. All right. So here we have the overview. Um, so at 4.10, we're going to have group introductions. 4.15, interview and student questions. 4.55, wrap up and reflection. And at 5, we're going to end the call. And how to be successful, you may ask. So you can grab paper and pen to take notes. And everyone can ask at least one question or more. Here we have the businesses who have previously supported Passion Impact, and we encourage you to support them when you can, especially throughout this time. And you can shout any of your favorite ones. Kingpins. <laughs> Tacos, fresh Mexican food. Awesome. All right, in terms of expectations for the meeting, y'all, um, we're going to make sure that we show gratitude and respect for all of those in the video chat, not just Sam and Kristen, but everybody else here. So right now you're muted. And if you do have a question, which is awesome and totally encouraged, what I want to make sure that we know how to do is raise the hand in Zoom. So the way that we do that is on the right side over here. It'll say, if you look where that image is under Mr. Rue, it says participants. So you click participants and then there's the button that says raise hand. It might look a little different junior on your phone. What I'd like for you to do is practice raising your hand. We got Jennifer. Awesome. Go ahead and make sure that you know Cecilia got it. Nice. If you can't find it, let us know. Awesome. Sam's got it. Yeah. Rachel's got it. Nice. You're going to raise your hand like that, Junior? <laughs> that works too. We could do that. Sure. Uh, Laura, do you know where that is? If not, no worries. If you have a question, you can message us too. Um, to finish this up, no nudity, vulgar, or demeaning language, inappropriate sharing of a screen, or inappropriate background images will be tolerated. Um, again, just we want to be here, and this is a safe space. So. If that happens, you're gonna get booted. Um, and depending upon the severity of it, you might not be able to be invited back. So just keep in mind what's behind you, you know, what you're putting on your screen and all that kind of good stuff. Um, screen names only, first name, awesome for everybody who's done that, thank you very much. And then the name of the game here, have fun, engaged. Back to you, Danya. Oh, you're on mute. Danya. Sorry, here we have Kristen Gonzalez and San Romero. Selva Negra was founded in 2016 in a tiny Brooklyn apartment in Crown Heights. The collection represents a uh, drive, holistic energy, united empowerment, careful craftsmanship, and engineered comfort. Um, designers like Kristen Gonzalez and San Romero found an immediate connection after meeting in New York uh, post graduation from um, Fit uh, in Parsons. They unite their Annie Hall tomboy style in bold feminine identity to embody a collection that aims to support women in their individuality. Uh, influenced by their Latina heritage, they support their collection with intentionally and internationally, sorry, and strength to combine a collection of honest, mindful products made in Los Angeles, California. Awesome. Welcome, y'all. Welcome. So here we're gonna have a quick, a quick warm up, a quick introduction of us. So if we can say our names, pronouns, school, 
And like a question of the day, if you could put yourself in someone else's shoes, who would it be? And I'm gonna be going to popcorn this to students. So, and I can start with myself. Um, so my name is Dania, my pronouns is she and her. I go to Franklin High School. And if I could put myself in someone else's shoes, um, I would probably say Ty Lopez, cause he runs a bunch of uh, businesses and he has like lands in like different places. So I would want to know how, how he managed to do all that stuff at once or not. <laughs> And I can popcorn that to Cecilia. Um, so my name is Cecilia and my pronoun is she and her. I go to Franklin High School and um I have no idea who she will <laughs> be in. I was not ready for that question. Um let's see. I don't know. Maybe one of today's speakers because I never experienced like a fashion design kind of job, and maybe that's a good opportunity and see how it's like, especially during this time. And I'll popcorn it to oh, Sharon. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Sharon. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I go to the University of Oregon, actually. My cousin, Mary, she like she's a part of Fashion Impact, so she told me about this, so I decided to um, come join in today. Um, if I could put myself in someone else's shoes, probably my mother's, honestly. She just, she's so hardworking. I don't know how she does it all, so I'd want to see what a day in her life is when I'm not around. Oh, and then I'll popcorn to uh, Jennifer. Um, is there two in, this, in here? There are two, actually. Let's start with, yeah, let's start with you, Jennifer. Well, shoot, that doesn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> uh, the double ends. Okay, I'll go first then. Um, my name is Jennifer. I go by she, her, and I go to Franklin High School. Um, I would probably want to be Bill Gates for a day, just so I can see how, like, he worked up to be so successful. Maybe learn. Awesome. Popcorn, who would you like to popcorn to, Jennifer? Um, I'll go to Rachel. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Rachel. I go by she, her. I am going to Portland Community College right now. And some of the shoes I would put myself in would be my mentor, Desi, um, she is also a fellow fashion designer right now. And I just wanted to experience and see how it would feel like when she started her career. So that's who I would be in. And um, I'll popcorn it to Stefan. <laughs> All right. Hi, y'all. I'm Stefan. I go by he, him pronouns. I attended James Madison University, and if I could put myself in someone else's shoes, um, thinking about this one earlier, um, I think it would probably be Michelle Obama. Um, she's had to go through a lot in her life, and a lot of her dreams have been put to the side to make way for Obama and I, for her husband. And I think that she deserves a lot of recognition and I would love to see what it would be like uh, to put, put myself in her shoes. Uh, I'm going to popcorn to Junior. Let's see if it works. If not, that's okay. All right, Junior, we'll come back to you. No worries. Laura, oh, there you are. Is it my turn? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, my name is Junior. Um, I'll go by he or him, if that's the pronouns. But the question was, if I wanted to put myself in someone's shoes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, honestly, I don't know. But if I did have to choose, 
touch with my dad just to see how he went through his life to like you know from like the place his he was born and like you know got raised up like there was a lot of war where he grew up in Afghanistan so I was just like you know see how he brought my whole family from there to uh, like you know India like you know from India he brought us to America so I just want to see like how he did all that you know went to the difficulties awesome thanks junior we have three people left if you want to pick one uh i mean whoever didn't go so <laughs> let's go laura let's go laura next and it's okay if you don't want to share laura i definitely understand all right let's let's go Kristen, and then we'll go sam after that Oh, okay. Um, my name is Kristen. Uh, my pronoun is she and her. Um, for school, I went to like three schools. But, uh, so as you saw, like FIT was one of them. Um, Cal Poly Pomona. I never in. Okay. Um, and if I could put myself <laughs> Stefan, you actually took my answer because I was going to say Michelle Obama. Um, but if I were to pick somebody else, um, man, this is a hard one. Um, uh, I have no idea. I'm just like <laughs> blanking right now, but um, but I I would want to say probably also my parents um, since like my mom or my dad to to see what they went through to to get me to where I am today. And popcorn Sam. Oh, hi guys. I'm Sam. Um, my pronouns are also she, her, hers. Um, I went to Parsons in New York, and if I could not be Michelle Obama for a day, because everyone else has chosen her, <laughs> um, honestly, right now, I think I would be Joe Biden's campaign manager <laughs> and um, ensure that he's aware of how to beat Trump and who he should be listening to. <laughs> um, and say the right things so that uh, we don't have to deal with Trump for another four years. I think that's what my, what I would want to do. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much. Yeah. And we're going to turn it over to Danya to start with some questions. Yeah, well, everybody's answers was really nice. A lot of you guys said parents, but if we can start with this conversation, um, I just want to ask, um, so can you just talk about who you guys are, what you guys do as co-founders of um, Selva Negra? Yeah. And we, and we, yeah, we can start with either one. So we're going to switch it off so we can okay. go with Christine. Okay. Um, so my name is uh, Christine Gonzalez. I am the co-founder with Sam. Um, my current title is CEO slash creative director. So what I do for the brand is kind of like oversee exactly how everything is translated um, into what you guys see. Um, but, you know, since we are still such a small brand, we have, we all have roles in kind of everything. But my main focus is like design and production, um, you know, managing our assistants and the people, our two lovely um, employees who work for us and, um, you know, the finances, <laughs> which is really boring, but also very, very important. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, that's kind of what everything, but, you know, Sam will, will explain what she does, but we kind of do everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so to add to that, um, as you know, I'm Sam, and I'm co-founder with Kristen, and my official title is CMO, which stands for Chief Marketing Officer. So I kind of deal with all of the 
like basically to put it in like big picture terms, like what is our voice as Selva Negra, right? Like, and I translate that into like how we portray ourselves on social media and like how do we talk to our customers and what, do we, what are our values? And like, you know, basically that's like what it is from a very, very big picture. Um, and then from like to very micro, like I work on like our graphics and, you know, making sure um, more of like the visual stuff and the language stuff. Um, but we do everything together because every week there are different priorities, right? So like our workload is coming in and based on what it is that we have to do, we have our primary roles, but we always will still like kind of popcorn off based on who's available, who can get what done, work with our two employees to figure out how we can just like make it through what it is that we need to tackle for that week. So it's, it's a lot, but it's more, it's more just like, um, organizing yourselves based on your role, but then being open to kind of being able to do everything, you know, you kind of have to be able to stay open. But yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, so I see that you guys do um, a lot of work together, designing and graphing. So I, I just wanna ask, um, how does that flow? How does your creativity flow? Cause I'm guessing you're just gonna have to start from something. So we can start off with Christine. Yeah, so when we first started, we, we literally three days after our initial launch, I moved to Los Angeles and Sam, Sam was still in Chicago. So our process of designing together kind of shifted into like just working remotely. Um, but, you know, we would, you know, talk about exactly what we wanted. But I think that from the very beginning, we always had a really big ease in designing together because we were really good. We're just a really good team in that way. Um, and after three years, uh, so last year, Sam actually moved to Los Angeles, um, which was really great because, you know, we're able to work together closely and, and really be able to execute out. So we've been kind of in a, in, in more of a process of uh, making sure that everything that we're doing together is aligned with each other. Um, but as far as like specifically design, we still, you know, sketch together. and We still have all the, these ideas. Um, but, you know, with, especially with the pandemic happening, there's been a lot of change in the industry, you know, so a lot of, a lot of designers are designing less, producing less. And, you know, our main focus right now is to at least maintain status quo as far as financials. So we, we want to make sure that anything that we're releasing is still true to us, but also is going to be, um, you know, in our minds guaranteed to sell or something that we're ensured that we're going to be making our, our investment back. Um, so, so that's how we do But the flow of everything is just, I, I always say lists are my best friend because as long as I make a list for the day, a list for the week, a list for everything, that is how my flow is able to go a little bit um, smoother and how my time management is, is able to be um, more conducive to production. But one thing I did learn recently is having like um, a high and medium and low priority list so that, you know, for like maybe the general month, you can be like, okay, I want to prioritize this. And you can like shift around. And it's good to use this with post-it notes. So you can like shift around your um, medium to low and then low to high and high to medium so that, you know, you can kind of like reorganize as you need to because there are always changes and there's so many things that always happen that are out of the blue. So you kind of have to shift a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like you pretty much summed it up for for us. But I would say that like to go into more detail from our process, um, a lot of times, B 
because we've been working together for quite a while, I think we're very in tune with like what, what it is that we're like craving in our own closets sometimes. So a lot of times we'll end up designing things based on like, okay, like here's something that we've been really craving or like, you know, outside of now we're actually designing like when we initially started the business, we were designing and sketching so much because we didn't have any styles. And now that we've had, you know, almost pretty much four years, we've generated quite a style list. So there's a lot that we can pull from. But usually once we sketch initially and come together, we kind of edit down what are our favorite styles or like what if we try this instead of this and like we kind of like morph sometimes our designs together which is also pretty cool um and then after that like second round we'll go into fabrics color like what is you know what do we want like our core fabrics to be we work with a lot of linen we work with a lot of cotton um, we also like prints and sometimes we make our own prints. So that's kind of like the order in which we go through the design process. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's a lot that I see. <laughs> but <laughs> the Jennifer had a question if she can unmute herself and talk about her question. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't Jennifer. Jennifer, was your hand still raised from when we raised our hand earlier? That's okay. <laughs> no, it, it was me. I'm sorry. Oh. Um, it, it's actually not a question. I just wanted to let you guys know that I have to go. But thank you again for inviting me. And um, I hope to see you all soon. Have a good time with the interview. I wish all of you the best of luck and a good weekend. Okay. Oh, thank you. Bye. Thanks, thank Rachel. Thank you. Sorry, can I Okay, um, so I guess C Cecilia has a question. She can unmute herself. Okay, so um, I was wondering from you, um, you two, like getting the idea that you guys want to start a business together until like actually like, launching your first designs and becoming an actual business. Like what was the process like and like what challenges or obstacles did you guys face and encounter? Yeah. Ooh, that was, it was really tough. Um, especially, I just moved to Los Angeles, which is a city that I didn't really know very well. I had previously lived in Pomona, but initially, you know, the first thing was like I had to figure out, like we had to figure out how we we're going to produce everything. So uh, the first step was Google uh, to figure <laughs> out where where do you make clothes in Los Angeles. Um, so, you know, there was a lot of a lot of um, a lot of researching. Uh, thankful for the internet uh, at that time because you know I just I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but you know from previous jobs I've I've known you know exactly the steps and also going to fashion school the steps of how to make something. Um, but there was a lot of people that I worked with that I you know we don't work with anymore for for certain reasons. But I think it was a lot of learning over time uh, who to work with and who not to work with. But, you know, when we, you know, Sam was kind of on that, uh, she was in Chicago, so she kind of had to focus on those things. And so since I kind of took on the production part, um, there was a lot of steps I had to take to get to that point. But basically, you know, when making a garment, you start off with, um, you know, making a pattern in, in which I was the pattern maker. So from there, you go to marking and grading, which is where you basically put it in the computer, put the pattern in the computer, and then it makes it into different sizes for grading. 
and then you print it out to a large piece of paper on this like really large printer and then you send it to the cutter um, and fortunately you know I had searched somebody who did marking and grading who also did sample making and production and thankfully you know he was able to do it for a lower quantity because usually when you're starting out you know it's really difficult to find somebody who will do something for you know a small quantity amount because most of these factories especially in Los Angeles which is another thing that we could maybe get into later but you know a lot of these factories you know even though it's made in America doesn't necessarily mean that it's ethical or that they're being paid well so you know I, I wanted to ensure that you know we knew where we were making our stuff and we knew the people we were working with so you know with working that with those people you know I felt like I trusted them to you know to make things you know and I know exactly the whole line of everything because we didn't want to have a situation where it was you know poor poor working to conditions or anything like that so um so from there they kind of helped me and then established a relationship with those people and they were have always been very kind to me and you know from there we kind of just started growing growing the production side yeah it's a lot of trial and error and I think that you kind of have to accept that you don't know what you're doing and yeah. in fact many of us don't um and it's it's actually a learning process so like I think from where we were when we first started which which I don't the intention actually um Kristen and I became friends and we actually just started designing together without even really intending to start a brand and um Kristen mentioned that well she basically was like by the way I'm moving to LA <laughs> and we had been meeting already for quite some time just like working together and like starting to just kind of build like different styles and we just decided that we wanted to show people what we'd been up to and we pulled all of our resources together like all of our friends everybody came through and we launched we basically made all the samples Kristen sewed all the samples herself in that first run um, we bought fabrics and we just like um, we had a mutual friend that had a store in the Lower East Side and we put it all together and we presented it and we actually received our first order from that presentation. So I guess all of that to say is that you don't necessarily have to, ha you know, there's a lot of planning and there's a lot of research when it comes to starting a business. Don't be afraid to start something and understand that it's not going to be perfect because it's not going to be and know that the more you do and the more you just put it out there that you will learn more and in fact i think kristen and i are still learning how to run our business and we're learning a lot about ourselves through the process and in turn it makes our partnership stronger you know so yeah i guess that's like an all-encompassing there is no right answer on how to start your business. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, I see that you guys do work a lot and I, from the previous video, I saw that you guys um, do, yeah, you guys do so much. So I was wondering, um, how do you guys keep that motivation and how do you guys keep going when it comes to your designs? Wow, that's, that's a really good question because, you know, I don't know if we have even relate this, but for the first three years, Sam and I had full-time jobs while doing this. And Sam still has a full-time job right now and also is a CMO full-time. So she's <laughs> she's a very hard worker and works a lot. Um, and, and I just came into this full-time very recently. Um, so, you know, there there's a lot... There, there's always something to kind of keep keep you busy, right? There's always something going on. Um, and I think that I personally have found motivation just by feeling like not only creating a fashion brand, you know, we have a lot of other things that you, well, let me back up here. So when we started Selva Negra, we, we 
we focused on Instagram and we were just posting constantly. And we got to a point where we were gaining followers like I had never even imagined. And we got to a point where we had a platform where we realized we're like, well, this is our perfect opportunity to use this platform and use it for not only for our fashion brand, but to do things outside of that and, and really promote a type of um, company morale that we want to address throughout, you know, the fashion industry, because there are, you know, unfortunately so many nuances in, in being a Latina in a independent, you know, high-end, sustainable, ethical fashion world, you know, so, um, so that is something I think that we realized over time that we thought that was really amazing that we had this opportunity and a platform to really promote these types of things and, and really show that they're, you know, showcase that this is attainable for people like us and where we come from, you know? Right. Um, I think that has been my core of like wanting to, to continue on and keep doing this because it felt like something much bigger than ourselves, but also just fashion, you know? Yeah. I fully, I fully agree with that. I think like many of you probably are, we are also kids of immigrants and first generation um, immigrants in this country. And so our parents have really worked really hard to get us to the place that we are, that we could even be in a position to be um, creatives, right? Because that's in and of itself, you know, I think that work has been laid down. Um, and I think that the motivation for me has changed more so in the last year to keep going because I do think it's important. I've realized I always used to think of fashion as something that like I can probably do, but I can't own it. Like I can't be an owner, especially when I went to school. Like I, I didn't see myself in fashion. I didn't see myself reflected in fashion. And I think that Selva Negra has really cultivated this like, empowerment in us that like we are doing it like we are we are kind of setting a tone here and I think that the motivation now for me is that I want people to see themselves in in us and that this is attainable for other kids that are brown and black and minority POC you know so I I think that's been a very huge focus and for both of us in our platform. Yeah. All right, I have a couple questions, but I'll, I'll just jump to the first one. Um, you're in a very crowded market. Mm -hmm. um, and for students who may not understand that term market, it's, you know, the industry of fashion. Um, there's a lot of different companies. You have very large, including here in Portland, you have Nike and Adidas. Um, and then there's small, and then there's some middle ones. How do you differentiate yourself? And um, I know that you've touched on it a little bit, but it's hard to start something already in a crowded market. How are you continuing to prove that that is successful for you? That's a really good question. I think that, you know, going back to our intent on where we started, we never really imagined where we would be today. So it all just feels, it still feels very new to us and you know we're still growing and learning in the process but the way that we're able to kind of navigate our industry in a very crowded space is you know we've always want to ensure who are we you know and, and defining right. our, our brand and defining who we are as people and how we want to portray that into the world and I think that you know in the first couple of years I felt you know it was I mean, it's still difficult to this day, but it was extremely difficult, like mentally draining. And, and you know, my old boss was like, you got to just kind of figure out the one thing that's going to separate you from somebody else, you know? And, and then after learning more on that and talking more with Sam and us realizing, you know, this is what we want to do is yes, in a very crowded space, but we want to focus on like how we can make a difference in our own industries and that really was, I, I really 
um, we had different focuses, but me personally, I wanted to push, you know, um, eco-conscious fabrics and how we can use technologies to be more sustainable in this business, even though sustainable is a really hard word to use because it's, it's overused and it's oversaturated. Um, and it, it is an oversaturated market right now, but I mean, I there's anything wrong with people being sustainable but it's about you know the greenwashing aspect of it that is not great um but sam really had a great focus on like inclusivity um of sizing and that's what we're also working on so we want we wanted to make sure that we celebrated the individual um at the same time of celebrating the people who work on the brand you know so like we pride ourselves in working like I work face to face with like every person who touches every part of our clothes and, and, um, and I feel really close to that. And Sam is very great at like making sure we're paying attention to all of our customers and, you know, just kind of putting that good energy out into our business and, and knowing that this is what we really stand for and what we believe in and how we can make a positive change um, is something that we have always felt really close to. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that sums it up. I would just say authenticity is key and being yourself is key and it's okay if you're like still learning who you are and you're still growing. I think as much, as long as you are being transparent and like allowing your voice to shine through, I think that is what matters because we already have so many companies out there that are so vanilla and they're so like, you know, what do you, what do you stand for? Like, I don't know. I don't know what, like, what does the gap stand for? I don't really know, you know, but, <laughs> um, but I think that like just being authentic has really helped us. I think um, growing our community, growing our voices. I feel like that has been such a key component to, just withstanding the market and withstanding the crowdedness of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's like, that's kind of a great thing. To, it is a great thing to see from um, a fashion brand because a lot of the times we don't see how, what they stand for. But another question that I have is, um, how would you define your communication style? Do you prefer to be close to your employees or factory or like maintain a healthy distance and why? Yeah, I mean, we, we, I, we have always been really close to everybody mm -hmm. we work with and um, it's, our factories, like I said, you know, we don't use the same ones as we initially used, but over time, you know, we, um, we tried really hard to make sure that we were in you know, putting ourselves out there into the fashion community. And that's where we, we feel really grateful to be a part of a group of, you know, designers who are in that, you know, independent uh, ethical space that we can kind of support each other. Like, for example, um, our first intern, Nellie, has been with us for two and a half years now. The first year she was just with us, would work like one day a week. Um, and, you know, I couldn't afford for to pay her so I you know it was an internship but she you know eventually she stayed on and you know she we eventually were able to pay her um and we end up uh share we now still share her with like three other designers you know so uh we're we're really trying to be involved and also just want to be involved in, in the community aspect of it and also with the people who make our stuff um I, at least I've, we've always really found so much value in those, in those people and, and how much we rely on them. And it's, we always want to make sure that they're, they feel like they're taken care of and they feel like they're a part of this as well. And, you know, this isn't just like another, you know, designer who's coming to like mix up with them. Like we really like to be, have them be included in the process as well. You know, sometimes, a, our sample maker will make a mistake and be like, actually, that looks really great. Like, so we should just go for it. And I, and I put a lot of trust in, in the people that do our sampling and our production, just be like, you know, this is, I'm very specific about this, but you know, I think that 
they have been doing, they've been doing what they've been doing for much longer than I have been doing this. So I, I feel very, um, very much in trust that they will do the right thing. Um, you know, there's obviously problems that happen all the time, but you know, you can't really let that get to you because if you do, then this is going to be the worst job ever, you know? So yeah. I think that, um, you know, making sure that we put the trust in people that they will do what they need to do. Um, I think that is extremely important, you know, cause when you put trust in somebody, that's when they feel like they have that space to be open and really do what they, you know, that reach their full potential. You know, if you don't put trust in somebody, then you know, they're not going to really, you know, believe in themselves. Yeah. We've, we've just created a tagline um, that Selva Negra is quality product made by quality people. And it's because we value the people and the relationships that we've built with our vendors. And it is an investment in them. And it's, I think if you make people feel valued, the work that they'll do for you will in turn be valuable to them, right? So I feel we, we've always just cared about making sure that everyone is actually taken care of and that people feel valued in this space because many of them don't. And there's many companies that don't take the time to invest in relationships with them, right? Like it's one thing to just like throw your money at a factory. It's another thing to just like humanize them and see them as people. And so I think that's where, where we come from in that. Kind of reminds me of just using people first language, but act being active in using that people first language and, and putting those people first in, in this, um, in your business. Um, yeah. I'm going to ask a, a pretty intense question if that's okay. And sure. if it's okay, if it's, if it turns out to be not intense, but, um, <laughs> I want to know about your largest failure and how you overcame it. Mm. And it'd be great if it's two failures, because that's even better to know that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's so, I've had so many. Oh, yeah. So many failures. <laughs> um, man. Well, I think one that sticks out to me was that one time where I, I did put trust in somebody, but they ended up, it was... Um, it was basically a, 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 a person who did like full production. Um, so I put my trust in that person and just like gave them everything, but then that moved me from everything production wise. So I didn't have any control over anything. I just was like, here's, here's a pattern. You do take care of the rest of it. And it ended up being a pretty major failure financially and production and sampling. And it was just kind of like our, our uh, our worst selling season even though the styles were really great I think the you know we had we got a lot of really great styles out of that season but um it was kind of like I distanced myself from the pe mm. people who were making it and it just felt wrong you know um so I think it was a huge learning mistake uh financially and you know just mentally and emotionally Yikes. Um, <laughs> wow, I've failed so much. And I think that like, one thing that sticks out um, is just not learning the financial side of the business sooner. You know, I think that that is just such a key component. And here's where the glamour goes away. <laughs> like, you know, like, fashion seems so glamorous from the outside but when you when you really look at the nitty-gritty of it like you are you are having to look at numbers you are having to look at yields right like you're having to calculate how much your fabric costs how much your production is going to cost how much does it cost to go to market and actually show our collection and like you know in in conjunction with how much you're spending and how much you're making, right? And so I think just for me personally, I would have 
I wish I would have taken the time to like really, really dive into the financials so much sooner um, than I did, because I think it would have helped both of us just like really be so much smarter about our spending um, and, and therefore profit, right? Like how much we could have made. So that's, that's a general biggie that I feel. And finances are not easy, so. They're not. No. And they're, they're not fun at all, like at all. That's why you have to find someone who thinks they're fun. And then yes. they're and you're like, good, okay, cool. It's absolutely true. Uh, we, we have time for a couple more questions. So I just want to make sure, does anybody else um, student-wise have any questions so, so that we, we can answer yours? Oh, Sharon, yes, awesome, Sharon, go for it. Hi, so I was just wondering like what skills or strengths do you think like really helped contribute to the success of creating Solvenegra? Um, well, passion is one of them, uh, for sure. Uh, grit. So I think w what I see in that term is, is not only uh, having the fire to do what you do every day, but also putting in the work and not, not seeing anything as below, you know, your, below your pay or like below what you do every day, because there's still things to this day. I'm a CEO and creative director. I still run errands like an intern sometimes. So you know, I think that is a huge part of it. <laughs> I, I, um, I feel like outside of the technical stuff, like, for example, like Kristen is an actual pattern maker and understands how to build clothing, right? I am, I have very basic pattern making because I actually took accessories when I was in college. So I like went down the bag route and like didn't really uh, focus on clothing. But I think outside of that skill wise, I think just like street smarts. <laughs> like I, I know it sounds so silly, but I think just like using common sense and then pairing that with like the words that Kristen just used, which are grit and like passion. I think if you just are competent and you're interested and you're curious and you don't can admit to yourself that you don't know everything there is to know, that you would do what you have to do to get there, right? So it's kind of just like using what you have and the skills that you've had, which so many of the jobs that I thought I would never take into my career, like working at a store, like being a manager at like a, like a retail store, you know, something like that, that I just never thought would actually apply to being a, a designer or owning a business, like actually do, you know, like even there's just like so many things that you think are just side hustles until you realize like, oh, I actually learned something from that and that is applicable to what we're doing now. So I think that's, yeah. I also do want to add um, a term that I think that maybe everybody is like, well, but being vulnerable, um, mm -hmm. I think is extremely important to owning a business um, because especially there's always moments where you're going to fail or feel like a failure, but it's about, getting over those humps and, and using those as learning experiences rather than getting angry and upset and putting blame on anybody. Um, I think it's important to make yourself vulnerable in those moments to be like, okay, let me take a step back and, you know, analyze myself and how mm -hmm. can I do better? And then how could the situation be better? So mm -hmm. I think that's really important. Yeah. Paula. Yeah, vulnerable. That's a hard one. <laughs> it's hard, hard to admit when you're wrong, for sure. Yes. Anya has the last question, unless there's anybody else who has any other questions. Oh, I'm so excited, Danya. <laughs> uh oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
okay, Stefan, <laughs> now I feel pressured. Anyways, um, so I had the last question. I just wanted to ask, how does it feel being a um, Latina woman running a business? Hmm. Man, this is, this is a really hard question because I think this is something Sam and I both had to address recently. Um, I mean, we've always really had this in our minds, but, you know, uh, to be vulnerable for a little bit, we have been included after the death of George Floyd. We've been included in a lot of, you know, black list of black owned businesses, which was really heartbreaking because we did not at all want to take away from, you know, what's happening right now. And, and we really wanted to amplify black voices. But then in, in an interesting way, it, it really made us look at, at ourselves and and understand our privilege and, and where we are. Um, as people today, and you know, I, I am a, I'm a white passing Latina and Filipina person. So I think that my privilege has gotten me to a lot of places. And even though it is difficult to be who I am in this type of industry, um, especially since you know I don't a lot of I look at a lot of these ladies who have gone to where they are, and I see like they have you know, so many things that have helped them get there and realizing that I've also had the same privilege. You know, I, I have a really strong family base. I have, you know, my family, my Latina, my Filipino family is very large. I have a really great support system. So, you know, having that culture behind me and that really strong base has really allowed me to be um, a strong leader in this space and be able to have a business and be able to keep it, um, you know, keep it growing. So, you know, even though it is, it is sometimes a little bit, um, you know, frustrating because there's so many things that go wrong. I don't have help on certain things and it gets really frustrating. I also have to check myself and, and really know that even though I am Latina and Filipina and I have certain struggles in my life, I, I am extremely thankful, you know, to have the opportunities and, and, you know, there, there may be somebody who came, comes from the same background as Latina and Filipina and still didn't get the same opportunities as me. So, you know, it's, it's really important to realize that and be, be grateful for, for where I am today. Yeah. Um, I'm not a white passing Latina, <laughs> um, but that's okay because I think that like Kristen and I have such different experiences in life. And I think that that also being so candid with each other and being so vulnerable with each other has allowed us to kind of get through our current events, right? Like things that are happening right now that are, you know, detrimental to society and, and you know, to be honest, brown communities go through the very same things, right? And so I think that we, it's just been such an incredible moment to be reflective and also to use our voices because a lot of times I think as a Latina, to be honest, like I think I grew up not really knowing when I was allowed to use my voice, not really knowing when, you know, I think um, just, just feeling like I can command the, the room with my voice. And I think that over time, I've learned that I'm just as valuable as everybody else. You know, my, my skills and my thoughts and, you know, what I have to contribute are valid, you know? So it did take me quite a while to understand that power. And now I feel really, really glad that as I'm growing, as I'm, as I'm getting closer to myself, as I'm learning about myself, as I'm educating myself, because to be honest, like, with that growth, there is a lot of education. And you have to take the time to like, reflect and be, you know, someone that's willing to not say like, this is where I stop, you know, like, you have to keep going. I think that that has really evolved over time. So it's been a journey and we're all going through our own journeys, you know, like we're each and every one of in this, each and every one of us in this Zoom 
classroom uh, has a story and we've all gone through our own set of circumstances. And I think just like everyone has to get to the point where they're like, okay with their voice. And I think that that's going to be so helpful in your journey in general to know that it's okay to stand up and, and have something to say. So yeah. Thank you very, very much. Mm. That, um, that was really nice to know. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap it up. So yeah. with that, I'm going to share my screen again. And there's two great parts that happen right here. Um, first and foremost, this is a chance for us all to reflect on stuff that we've just heard and, and to put some stuff either down in writing. You can talk. You can just throw it out there. And um, if you heard something really good, some of those nuggets, if you keep it to yourself, are really great. But if you can share those nuggets with all of us, it helps us all like really internalize them and, and cement them in our heads. So the few questions are, what did you learn from this interview that you're excited about? Um, and how can you use that information moving forward? Um, and if you have any ideas, advice for passion impact overall to improve this experience, that's also great to know. Um, the second part to this is joke time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Donya asked, right? So maybe Donya should start with a joke first. I don't know. Oh my God. Okay, guys. I can start one. If you guys want, <laughs> Stefan said. Okay, what do you call a jacket that's on fire? What? A blazer. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually fun. The delivery was key in that in that <laughs> situation. <laughs> um. Kristen, what's your joke? Oh, God. It's not funny, you guys. Um, okay. Uh, well, this is more specifically just like how to remember things in fashion. So I don't know if you guys know, but you know, when you button things on a men's shirt or pant, it's a different side than when you button on a women's shirt and pant. So in order to remember that, you always think that men women are right and men are left over <laughs> so oh, cool, cool so that's how you remember my my teacher told me that okay <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and you got one sam or i can, no, I, I, can... I have zero jokes guys <laughs> keep going <laughs> that was a great joke <laughs> Jennifer wrote here, I learned that it's important to build good, trusting relationship with producers and people that you work with. Snaps. It, it sounds like that is the foundation that y'all have built this organization on. And if it weren't yeah. there, then it probably wouldn't be as awesome as it is now. Yeah. Any other thoughts from others? I have some things, if that's cool. Um, I wrote down lists. Kristen, you've talked about lists to your best friend, and you have been really focused on these post-it notes of high, medium, low and kind of trying out a, this, um, this priority list. And that sounded really cool. Um, trust was an, a big one that stood out to me and how you allow people to reach their own full potential versus holding them back um, into the things that you think that you want. And, oh, cool, you made a mistake. Actually, it looks really nice. Let's keep it, let's move forward. Mm -hmm. um, I have like four other, five other things here, but is there any other ideas that anybody else, you know, Know, conjured up in this in this uh session so see cc's typing i can see that yeah i see you nice um donya is there anything that you reflected on yeah um so i heard when you were talking about the financial side dive in the financial side and which is something that i've heard from stefan and now i've heard from you and i feel like um i guess if that can help some people then I guess that can help <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah also the quality people um a lot of people a lot of people have like um fashion companies don't really talk about that so that was really uh, good to hear and that I've learned of 
you guys as a brand. Yeah. Is it okay if I ask a question to everybody? Do, I know we're like uh, running out of time, but I would, if, is anyone interested specifically in like, um, are people thinking about becoming fashion designers or are you just like interested in it as a, not necessarily, there's so many lanes in fashion. Like, is there any specific lane that you're thinking about if you are thinking about it? Um, I'm not, but I have a close friend who's like about um a really designer, and he's been like doing a lot of um designing, and he's thinking about like contacting some um like suppliers to see mm -hmm. if he can get stuff printed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so for me, I don't know. I'm a big math person, so I always think that when I'm going to the math finance field, and I um, am, but I always felt like fashion designing is pretty cool, and I'm like, I'm always interested in fashion for a while, but like, I never got like in touch or like know about the field more, so that's why I attended this, um, se this session as well as like entrepreneurs also something that I'm really interested in and you both started their own business which is very impress impressive mm -hmm. so that's why I also am really interested in you'd probably be really good at pattern making then because pattern making is all math and it's it's all like it's like pattern makers are like the architects of fashion design um, so that might be something you're really good at if you're interested, like, you know, if you want to use your math brain and fashion together. Yeah. I'll look into that. Thank you. Yeah. I love pattern making. It's, it's like putting a piece of, uh, uh, pieces of a puzzle together mm -hmm. uh, with numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of similar to what Cecilia actually said, like I was kind of interested in like entrepreneurship for a little bit, like in high school. Um, I took a entrepreneurship and marketing class. So we actually had to like come up with a product and I designed like sweatshirts and I sold them at like our school trade show. And I really like loved the process of all of that. Yeah. But I kind of leaned more into like the business side of things rather than like the creativity. So I was just kind of like exploring different industries I could possibly like go into after college. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of funny because even though we're fashion designers, I think that the design part of it is such a small part, you know, the, the mm -hmm. rest is really about like putting that vision together um, which is financials production you know um, marketing it's all all of that stuff so yeah also to add to that every any creative person ever needs a business person like they really do need a business side mm -hmm. so like you could co-found a business just being like the business entity, even if the other side is creative, you know? So like, that's kind of a brain that creatives need um, to just pair up with because creatives don't have to be good at everything. And like business people don't have to be good at everything. They just have to be good at what they do. Mm -hmm. So that's like, you know, you can probably team up with, all types of lanes. Yes. Awesome, yeah. thank you. Yeah. CC also wrote that, uh, I learned that starting a business requires a lot of trial and error and it's okay to be confused. 150%, that's, you're gonna get that. Um, but mm -hmm. just to remember to reflect on the mistake and fix it <laughs> next time. Yep. <laughs> all right, well, just so that y'all know next, time that we're going to be interviewing i think we're going to skip one week in the last week of june till june 24th we're going to be interviewing josue rivas and josue is a photographer and a visual storyteller um, he really centers his work um, around the narrative of indigenous peoples and the awareness affecting native communities um, he's based here in portland um, so there might be a chance to actually meet him and if things open up in the next four or five years um, and Kristen and Sam find their way up here, or we find our way down there. Maybe there's a way to connect in that sense. Definitely. Um, 
with that being said, thank you so much, Kristen and Sam. We really appreciate your time and, and all of your insights. Um, it was really nice to hear and refreshing. Good. Thank you, guys. Thank Have you. you. Unmute yourselves. You know what I'm going to say, Danya, right? Yippee! Yippee. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool, y'all. Well, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your afternoons. And I'm just a quick question, Kristen and Sam. It's okay if you say no. Um, would it be okay for the students who attended today if I emailed them your emails to connect yes. with you if they have any additional questions? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Cool. Well, yeah. look out for an email tomorrow, everybody, and I'll put this online so you can see your beautiful faces. Thank awesome. you, guys. Thank you, guys. You're all beautiful. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.